as a, an analogy, we were just machine gunning our way through the place to get noticed, to, to get, gain some traction for the Art of Charm. And for that time, it worked really well. But if, then, of course, as the technology got more refined and we figured out how to use it properly, as we got in order, we refined the tactics in which we used to move. So then, a few years later, we moved to Los Angeles and we had a plan of starting over again. And I'll tell you what we weren't going to do. What we weren't going to do is get into Los Angeles and make as much as noise as possible to get attention. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the show today. We drop great content each and every week, and we want to make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're going to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. Well, I'm really excited to talk about this topic. I know the three of us have moved quite a bit in our adult lives, and I was recently hanging out with some X Factor members and boot camp alumni in New York City. And this question came up. We had a new member who moved to New York City and he was spending his first few weeks trying to get a handle on how to meet new people and build the social circle. He had a big one in San Francisco, but he was essentially starting over. And I know that both me and Johnny, we've moved multiple times throughout the US and we're excited to have you with us, Michael, to talk a little bit about the nuances going on and moving in Europe. But this is an opportunity for us to reset and essentially restart our social circle from scratch. And I think at times that can sound intimidating and can certainly be anxiety inducing, but it also is a positive. It's a way for us to restart and refresh the relationships that are in our life that are impacting us. And if you've been a fan of this show, you may have heard us say over the years, well, you are the sum of your five closest friends. And if you think about your five closest friends, well, they're probably not moving with you if you've moved. So who are you gonna invest time in? Who are you going to spend time with in this new city and how do you find them? Today, we're gonna break down some of our strategies that we've used over the years to move around, to establish social circles in new cities. And I know for myself, I was terrified when I first moved, uh, left home, moved to college, didn't have very many friends joining me at the University of Michigan from high school. And really that was my first time doing this. Now it's not my first rodeo. So I have some strategies that I'm excited to share. Well, we're certainly gonna get into those strategies, but I also wanna set this up that I would think most people are going to find themselves moving at some point and having to start over so at some point in life. And it shouldn't be looked at as a bad thing. It should be looked at as a good thing. We have more tools now to stay in touch with the people that we might be leaving behind as we move to our new city or, or new country even. But at the same time, we created our virtual world and now our virtual world is impacting our real life world. And, and, I, and I say that because Regardless of how the virtual world has impacted us in real life, one thing remains the same, and that is we need connection. We need real life connection. We need to be around people in order to feel good. It's even shown, and we've talked about it on this show, that even micro interactions, those little interactions with your with the, with the barista or the Uber driver goes a long way in allowing us to feel connected. And when all of your connections are online, and, and, and I have plenty of online virtual friends, and we always talk about solidifying those relationships by having a real life meetup. However, the, real, the online relationships that you have are not going to suffice for what you need to feel, to feel fulfilled in your real life. And that is important. Those, the relationships you have, they may get you by, they may get you out of the dumps when you're feeling down, but it's not going to be anything like being face to face. Yeah, I can, I can totally speak to that. I, uh, when I was in the, in the film industry, I think I moved like five or six times within a decade. So every one or two years, I would be moving for a new project. 
And every time I was starting from scratch, now granted I had a great job, great teammates, but I was always in a new city, in a new country, in a new continent, and I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what I was doing and I made a lot of mistakes. And I just wish that with all the stuff that we're going to share in this episode, I just wish that Michael, when he was 25 years old, he would have known this stuff because I did rely on the online connections. And, and back then that wasn't even Zoom, that was email, texts, uh, Facebook, and, and it wasn't enough. Even even given like time difference and stuff that that can come in there as well, not just the localities, but but being like five hours removed from you know the people that you know. Yeah, it's it, it's not enough. So let's let's dive into uh, let's let's uh, let's let's go through the stuff that I wish I had known when you know when I was young. We drop great content each and every week, and we want to make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're going to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. Well, you said something there that I want to expand upon, and I want to give AJ and I's own uh, example of this, our own story, which is when we moved to New York City to start the art of charm we were younger we had a different mentality all this technology that we're that we're talking about was just in its infancy social media as a whole was in its infancy i remember getting to new york and opening a twitter account for the first time now and since then technology has drastically changed but you mentioned about when you moved michael that it was it was difficult and it was almost it was a sort of a mess and we now have moved that i specifically have moved several times in my life and i have refined that move and the tactics that i used as time went on when we moved to new york we were much younger as i said this technology was rather new the idea was get to new york make as much noise as possible and so you could say that I, as an example, uh, as a, an analogy, we were just machine gunning our way through the place to get noticed, to, to get, gain some traction for the Art of Charm. And for that time, it worked really well. But if, then of course, as the technology got more refined and we figured out how to use it properly, as we got in order, we refined the tactics in which we used to move. So then, a few years later, we moved to Los Angeles and we had a plan of starting over again. And I'll tell you what we weren't going to do. What we weren't going to do is get into Los Angeles and make as much as noise as possible to get attention. We now refined those strategies. We used the, the new technology as we learned how to use it to work for us. And we were more strategic in the way we went about setting up shop. And we've even talked about that. We used some meetup.com in order to gain some awareness and gain some traction. And we'll be discussing that in a bit as well. Well, that technology is essential now. Yes. When we moved to New York, it was okay to not have a Twitter. It was okay to not have an online presence. But this is your pre-move work list, your worksheet. You need to create a social media profile on all the platforms. If you don't have one, Pick one or two that you really enjoy and start showcasing your personality before you even move. Because the way the world works now, you meet someone in passing, you meet someone in real life who's new to town, you're gonna check out their social media. You're gonna look them up on your favorite platform, whether it be Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, maybe even TikTok. And if they're a ghost, if they're a random profile with no context, no personality, the odds of that person actually wanting to connect further with you and, and meet again diminish. And we didn't have that when we moved to New York. We weren't as tapped in. Of course, people would Google one another, but the social media platforms were not as ubiquitous as they are today. So homework, if you know that you're moving somewhere yes. or you just moved somewhere, do a social media audit. Are you highlighting your personality, your passions, your pursuits, your favorite travels, your favorite books, what podcasts you're listening to? Even if you're shy and introverted, it's a very important and simple way to create an online presence that gets people more interested in seeing you again and welcoming them into your network. Just to go along with that, 
for myself and I had to move to Vegas during the pandemic, right? This is one of the worst times to be moving where you're moving to a new place. You're moving in the middle of a pandemic. A lot of things are shut down. When I moved to my new building, it was a lot of, of the areas were off limits, the common areas due to everyone figuring out what was going on with COVID. But even so, before I moved, for the, the social scene that I enjoy, and spe specifically in music, I started reaching out to people who worked at some of the clubs and from some of the fanzines that I was reading online that was dedicated to the scene that of music that I like. And when things started opening up due to the vaccines, I was then able to solidify all the relationships that I had built online. And this is very important, even with our X Factor members, which is an online course and year long mentorship program. And it is fantastic. And we are dedicated into building the lives of our members. However, that we made sure that we have quarterly masterminds so that those people and, and us can meet in person, meet in person, solidify our relationships and connect even in a in a deeper way than we can online. This also makes you invested in one another. So now that I've met this person, we've talked online, he's been my accountability buddy, and now I've met him online, I've invested more of my time to this person. So now I'm more engaged to their mission, what they have going on, and I'm gonna fight harder to help them. This is the community that we've created and why we've made sure that there was an in-person, in-real-life component to it.